Welcome. This is Yoga for Stress, and my name is Jonathan, and this has been quite a stressful year. I'm actually wearing the same pants I've worn since uh, March, March 16th, and uh, I just wear gray sweatpants and then a gray shirt as well, pretty well for the last eight months or so. And uh, of course, with uh, the this stressful year, a lot of us have fallen back to our yoga practice as a way to create a peace of mind and a sense of ease. And within our nervous system, we have uh, two types. So there's the sympathetic nervous system, that's our fight or flight response, which is something that is okay to trigger when needed. So um, when you need to get out of a dangerous situation, that triggers us to pump blood to the areas of the body that need to get you out of that dangerous situation. But then the parasympathetic nervous system is the one that uh, is more of the rest and digest or mend and tend. So the ability there is to relax and de-stress, to have our minds uh, calm down a little bit and uh, lower our heart rate. So we can do that, of course, by just breathing, paying attention to the breath, and especially making the breath uh, longer. So sitting tall, reach your arms in front of you and then touch the tips of your fingers together into globe hands position. Close your eyes, lift your chin, and begin to breathe more consciously. So a big breath in, primarily through your nose, and then a big breath out. And no rush for the breath, let yourself pause at the bottom. And again, inhale, fill in all the way. And exhale all the way out. You're always welcome to constrict the back of your throat for the ujjayi breath, inhale. And one more time, exhale out. Okay, and then open your eyes, lower your hands, and make your way into all fours position. So in practice today, I've got a block, there's a strap, there's a blanket, and a bolster. The plan is to use them all. You may have to get creative and find what you can. And of course, you might just adapt without it. So here in all fours position, separate your hands as wide as your shoulders and place your knees under your hips. And on an exhale, round your spine, tuck your chin in. And then inhale and arch your back, look forward. And just continue that. So again, no rush. Let this practice today be one where you guide yourself inward. The storm and chaos that is going on around us through this year. And find the calm and tranquility that lies within us. Whether that's in our heart, in a quiet mind, or a vibrating spirit. Okay, and then come back to a neutral spine position. And in the neutral spine position, just push your hands away from each other and push your knees away from each other. So there's something that uh, is de-stressing about just creating strength in yourself. So soft strength, not necessarily two minute plank holds. And then here, tilt your left ear towards your left shoulder and then also move your left hip closer to your left shoulder. So you start to narrow your left side waist as you arch your right side waist. You can even enhance that by lifting your feet and then pivoting on your knees to take your feet even further to the left. Still further to enhance it is to rise onto fingertips and move your hips back. So just getting a stretch through the side waist on the right side by strengthening the left side and then lower your right hand down and just switch to the other side. So right ear to right shoulder. You can pivot on your knees to move your feet in the air 
towards the right side of your mat or further and then even rise up onto the left fingertips. So just a, a side body stretch. Okay, and then back to center. And then from this position, just do what you did, except switch it back and forth. And I often call it uh, snake and eel. So it doesn't need to be that the hip and the head move at the same time. They can actually slither at a different rate. So just creating uh, a lubrication of your spine in the side plane, as opposed to just that round and arch position. It's also great um, for moves on the dance floor as well, which is another activity that is quite de-stressing, getting up and dancing. Okay, and then just back to a regular position, tuck your toes under and lift yourself up for downward facing dog position. Here in Downward Facing Dog, take a deep breath in. And then a deep breath out. And two more. So just big breath in. And big breath out. And then last one. Look forward between your hands and slowly step towards the front of your mat. And if you have a block and like to use it, you can always put your hands on a block. I'm a big believer of the, if you can make the practice more accessible for yourself, go ahead and do it. So just bowing in. Others might benefit by holding the elbows or cupping the back of the head as you bow further. Waiting for your next inhale. When you do inhale, lift for a halfway lift position and then pause and hold the pose, but not necessarily your breath. So bend your knees forward, arch your back, lengthen your spine and begin to push your legs a little straighter. And then from this position, lean to your right foot, step your left foot back, but lower your knee to the floor. And uh, over my decade of teaching, I've made people tuck the back toes and made people point the back toes. So up to you in terms of what you prefer and how you feel. Then pull your legs towards each other. So front leg back and back leg forward. So you feel strength in your legs, which allows you to reach and expand. So when we know that we have the strength and comfort in our foundation, that's when it gives us the, the freedom to open, to rise, and to reach. If, of course, we're unstable, that's when that sympathetic nervous system can kick in, where we look to try to hold on and fight. Okay, to switch legs. Uh, one option, not always taught as much, is just step your front foot back and then lift your other leg forward. So this is the left leg. And then bend into the knee. Again, option, point or tuck your back toes. Uh, I used to harp on tucking them under, uh, but then my knees got pretty sensitive and I like being on the, the top of the shin. So I point the back toes, pull the legs towards each other, feel the energy and strength root into your pelvis and then lift up out of that and reach up all the way. You can look forward. You could even look up, extend your arms high. We'll do a few standing poses to begin with and then uh, spend a bit more time uh, seated or just like rolling around. This is one of those like roll around with pillows classes. Sometimes I call it thinking about things. Okay, and then touch your hands down, push off your back foot, step your foot forward, and then lift for a halfway lift position. Again, I just instinctively use the blocks. 
and then place your hands to your hips. Wait for your next inhale and slowly rise all the way up to stand and bring your arms alongside you. So I don't always cue every single inhale and exhale and part of that is when I'm a student in a situation like that, I can feel a little bit overwhelmed when um, I'm not keeping up with the same breath rate that's being instructed. So it's always important to just find your own rate. Now lean over to your right foot, lift your left leg and hold on to your knee. Hold your knee, lift the knee up, look forward. And it's always nice to just offer the extra challenge if you want, not making it super stressful, but uh, if you want a little bit more activity, hold under your thigh so you have that support. Drop the weight of your leg into your hands and extend your leg straighter in front of you. And again, straighter is a relative term, so it doesn't have to go all the way to straight. Hopefully we'll have time for this position lying on our back where it's a lot more relaxing and enjoyable. Then rebend your knee and lower your foot down. Then switch to the other side right away. With your inhale, lift your right leg up, hold your knee, stand tall. And then option to hold under your thigh and extend your leg straighter. In general, the yoga breath is in and out through your nose, uh, but you're always welcome to switch to your mouth and, uh, and just feel how that might actually cool the energy. It may soften the mood and uh, especially if you're not wearing a mask, you can then appreciate like, oh, freedom. Okay, then bend your knee, lower your foot and take a wide stance on your mat. So turning to face the side. A wide stance is generally defined as when your arms are out to a T that when you point your fingers down, your feet are under your fingers. Then bend your knees, place your hands to your hips and begin to hinge forward and then pause. So it's not just a, a round all the way forward, it's make the movement at your hips Come down, touch the fingers down for the halfway lift position. And then from there, bring your hands flatter, walk your hands back, and then finally begin to push your legs straighter. So for some, it's pretty easy to even move the hands further back, maybe even get the head to the floor. Others, you might be able to get your head onto a block. That as an example, still might be a little bit too far for me this early in a practice. I might need about uh, 40 minutes of a vigorous practice to be able to get to that. So I just stack my hands up and then can rest a little bit by putting weight into the head and pushing the legs straighter. Again, your breath is your ticket and your gateway to slowing everything down. On an inhale, lengthen your spine and then place your hands to your hips. Inhale and slowly rise up. Keep your right foot as it is, but turn your left foot all the way out, 90 degrees, and then bend into your knee. So leg set up for warrior two, but we'll just do forearm to thigh and then swing your arm in that direction. So bicep over the ear, even rotating your arm so that it's thumbs up position and then reach and extend. So a little bit more relaxing is just don't go so far bending into that front knee. Uh, more challenging of course bringing your front thigh parallel to the floor. And the advantage of course of doing a little bit of a challenging standing position early on is just to warm up the body, uh, specifically the legs so that they're more open and uh, ready for some of the seated positions. Push through your feet and rise all the way up, stretching the arms up, straighten your left leg, turn your foot in and turn your right foot out Then bend into your knee, place forearm to your thigh and then extend your arm long, reach for your dreams. And of course, this is the year that our dreams may not have been attainable. So this is of course the year to dream 
if you can't do it, then dream it. And uh, we can come back in full force at another time, either next year or um, depending on tonight, four years from now. Okay, and then push with your front leg, come all the way up, turn your right foot in, and then heel toe your feet in, hands to your hips, just step back to the front of the mat again, weight your right foot, place your left foot for tree pose. I think this will be the most, uh, or the last truly upright position. And then join your hands together in front of your heart. And it's uh, early November, so we're into the thick of autumn fall here in Western Canada. And of course that means that the trees have changed colors, at least the uh, deciduous trees. It'd be bad if the uh, coniferous evergreens changed colors. But uh, those that are leaf bearing are now starting to shed their leaves. So it's just a reminder that uh, it's okay for us to change colors, to change ideas. And of course, it can be so great to let go of the things that we don't need anymore. And switch sides. Balance on your left foot, place your right foot. I usually grab the ankle to put the foot to the upper inner thigh. And then rejoin hands together. If you prefer having your foot to your inner shin or even a kickstand to the inner ankle, just so that you take the challenge of balance out or be close enough to a wall that you have that to hold on to. I teach some vigorous practices where I, I notice the trend of people are, are trying to push it and make poses harder. And I'm actually quite the opposite. Sometimes I just try to make things as easy as possible for myself. Okay, lower your foot down. Have the feet fairly wide. It just gives a bit more space here. Clasp your hands behind your back. Interlace your fingers. Bend your elbows and keep the wrists separated. So it's just the fingers that are hooked in here. And then with your knees bent, bow forward over your legs. Just standing forward fold Uttanasana with a bind in your hands. Okay, and then touch your hands down. Inhale, lengthen for a halfway lift position. And then exhale, step your left foot back and stay on fingertips here. So I often call this one high lunge, but when I say high lunge, uh, all of my students end up rising up into a crescent lunge position, which is different. So high lunge meaning that it's just the back knee is lifted compared to when the back knee is down. And uh, similar-ish to the side angle pose, that it can be a pretty fierce position to build up strength in the legs, but there's just, um, it's sneaky challenging because the hands are down. Okay, and then push off of the foot and step your right foot back. We'll eventually add to that, but just switching the legs. Uh, this is not the class where we'll do one side for like eight poses in a row and then have that one leg fall apart. That's not the way to de-stress. Keep the back thigh lifted. On your exhale, sink lower into the front knee. Okay, and then push off of your back foot. Step forward and step the left foot back again. And then this time lower your knee down. Again, same as before, you could point your toes or tuck them. I like having the block available and you can wiggle the right foot off to the side, turn it out a little bit, and then begin to bend your elbows, sink down lower. So you could put um, forearms to a block. You may be able to get forearms to the floor, I can do that. It's just, I don't know if it's necessarily healthy for my body. At least at this moment in time. Again, there's a difference between where I may be after two hours of dedicated practice versus 20 minutes. If you wanna 
make this a little bit more truer to uh, form, what's often called method acting. If you have a heating rock about the size of a bolster, you could always lie on that like a, a lizard. Okay, and then slowly rise up. You're welcome to switch legs by stepping forward or doing what we did at the beginning, which is just to bring your leg back and then step the back leg forward and lizard pose, other side. When I was growing up around grade six, seven, so maybe 11, 12 years old, I had a, a pet lizard, an iguana named Iggy. I was very creative in my names. You know how dogs, especially mellow dogs or cats, can be really great for um, calming you down. Uh, Iggy, <laughs> Iggy was the definition of stress. It's interesting to have a pet that like is in, it wasn't a cage, it was like a, a tank. It's only like this big, but he would eventually get to the... <laughs> the same height as me in terms of the tail. Um, yeah, it's not so relaxing anymore. Okay, and then come back up if you went down onto your elbows. And then just back to all fours position, just returning to where we were. Tuck your toes under and then lift your knees to hover and turn your knees to the left and bring your right hip down. And this one's called seated side twist. Uh, push your arm straight and uh, just the way the left hand is here, it, it's hard to get the right arm straight. So actually rise onto your left fingertips, pull your hand back and then push down with the hands, lift the rib cage up and twist from left to right as you anchor down through your right hip. And we'll eventually do the same position, but on a bolster in a bit more of a relaxing position. So just prepping the body for that. And then go left hand flat and then shift your knees the other way. So knees go to the right, left hip down. Again, right fingertips, pull the hand back, push down with the hands, lift the rib cage up and turn from right to left. Okay, and then right hand flat, tuck your toes and just back to all fours position. And then thread the needle, but arm style. So thread your right arm underneath your left arm. Bring your right shoulder down and the right side of your head down. You can always reach the left arm forward more and actively push the hand forward. And move your right hip back. Then if you move the Left hand forward, bring your left hand back. Push with the left hand to come out and lower your right hand down. And then switch sides. So left arm threads under. This is a good position to notice if you need to uh, clean your floors. No pressure, of course, to do that right now. Just something to add to the list of tasks you can complete at another time. See if you can spot anything that you've lost under the couch. Okay, and then push yourself up. And then just for a moment, tuck your toes under, lift your knees to hover. This is not the best position for relaxation, bear pose. And just prepping you to appreciate the relaxation of child's pose by just creating a little bit of tension and then lower your knees down, point your toes, 
and sit back for child's pose. You can bring the arms alongside you, forehead down, or you can do the version where your arms stay forward and then sit back onto your heels. Interestingly, this position is often a starting pose um, because it's mellow, but for me, it's actually quite a stressful pose because um, early in a class, the compression on my knee hurts my knee and I can't hold it very long. So I like it as a resting position momentarily, but not a position I could uh, rest in for a long period of time. Uh, come back up and then we'll go into seated positions here. So I like to use a block. So I'll sit with a block and then I might also have my strap handy for a few of the positions. But starting out first with Baddha Konasana, which is bottoms of the feet together, knees out to the side. An option to just stay upright like that, or you can lean forward and hook your shins with your elbows as you bow forward. And then round in forehead towards feet. Okay, and then come up. Keep your left leg as it is. Extend your right leg forward. It might go a little bit to the side. And then have your left foot point with the heel in front of your pelvis. Turn over your right leg and bow forward. Uh, I'm less flexible. For those who are quite flexible, you can even challenge yourself by holding the back of your head and hinging forward that way just so that you maintain an element of strength. It doesn't have to be super vigorous, but uh, but also work towards not collapsing and then just holding the position. If you're on a block, it's useful to have a little bend to your knees just to avoid hyperextension. If you're seated, you can't hyperextend really unless you straighten the legs so much that your front heel lifts. And then I also like to just use a strap. It's been very helpful for me from going from being inflexible to just moderately inflexible. Okay, and then lift your torso up and just switch legs. So left leg out and right leg in. Turn over your left leg. You can hook up your foot with a strap or you can cup the back of your head. Lift up tall, turn over the left leg and then bow forward. Okay, and then come up. And then I'm just going to angle myself to have more space here, but go wide legged um, with the widest being about 120 degrees. So I, I struggle even just to get 90 degrees. So 120 might be my other leg going towards the bolster. There's sometimes just misinterpretation of Upavista Konasana. There's a whole other pose, which is side splits, which is a different pose. So this one has um, flexion. Side splits is primarily just the abduction. Bow forward between your legs. And ab only abduction leads to high stress situations. Uh, I know some of you probably get your elbows down. Um, I need bigger elbows or even forehead down. Okay, and then uh, just come up and then go over the right leg. This is where it's a little bit easier to use the strap for the right leg. Pulling on the foot, push back to the strap, lift the torso up and hinge forward over your leg.
then on an inhale, come up, and then just switch sides. So turn over your left leg and then bow forward. Another option if you're holding the strap or um, holding your foot is just hold with the right hand and then use your left hand as an outrigger for balance, but also leverage to twist a little bit more. Feel like one of the benefits of 2020 has been uh, less on my laundry bill as I feel like I, I just wear the same clothes for an entire week straight. Okay, inhale and slowly come all the way up and then bend your knees and then position your feet like you would for a squat position. So if you feel comfortable going into a squat and lifting your hips up, do so. Again, being on a block gives me an advantage. I, I'm literally in a seated position, but um, set up like a squat so there isn't the stress of my body weight, particularly on the joints. The joints are stressed enough by just being in the full flexion position uh, without having to carry my body weight. And I can focus on hugging the knees in and pushing out with the elbows. Oftentimes we'll see another practitioner and go like, I want to be able to do what that person does. And every body is shaped differently. So that might be a limiting factor. And what also isn't seen is all of the work, the preliminary stages that that person who can do advanced postures has done previously. And there's no rush. We've got lots of time. Okay, and then just position back to all fours facing forward. And then on this one, it'll be to just lower all the way down. And then bring your hands so you can put your forehead on your hands and then just bend your knees. So your feet go up and you're welcome to do a little windshield wiper with your shins side to side. And then pause, pushing the knees down, rise up onto your elbows for sphinx position. Uh, so a bit more intense with the shins up. So you can always just point your legs all the way, less intense and then more intense. Uh, push down with the elbows, pull your rib cage forward, feel a stretch even through your belly. Okay, and then straighten your legs if they were bent. And then just transition, rolling to your side and then to your back. And then lift your right leg up into the air, hold the back of your thigh. So easier is with your left knee bent, foot flat, more challenging leg straight. I'm about making things easier. I'll keep the knee bent. And then this is where I'll even loop up the foot with the strap. So the idea of the strap or a belt is you could pull down on the leg so it goes into your hip socket, the thigh bone, and then you can push and extend up. Oh, that feels so good. Which really is about what we're seeking to learn more about ourselves, but also just feel good in the body so that we can then dance. And then just switch to the other leg. So right foot down, lift the left leg up, hold the back of your thigh or extend your leg up with the strap. If you're holding the back of the thigh, that's the same position as standing, holding the leg in front of you with your hands under your thigh. And the more you practice yoga, the more you recognize that the shapes just tend to repeat themselves in various poses, just in a different plane. So there's a connection and repetition. And of course, as we get older, that's called life as well. When we start to see the interconnectedness of everything and everyone. 
Okay, and then just release the leg, lower your foot down, lift your hips up for bridge pose. You can go into a robot arms position. And just because it's more of the relaxed version of yoga today, um, you could put a block under your hips. And I actually go for the lowest setting. And then let the hips drop all the way down into the block. So the belly lifts slightly. Option to lift one leg up, knee in, and then extend your leg straighter. And then bend your knee, lower your foot, and then other knee in, extend your leg straighter. And then bend your knee, lower your foot, move the block off, and then lift your knees to hover. Cup your kneecaps. This one's called Freedom Pose, so it's a bit more bowspring esque. Uh, so you just let the weight of gravity do the work of guiding your thigh bone into your hip socket, so arms straight. There's no necessary need to pull down or anything and to actually feel heavier in your pelvis you can push your knees up into your hands to weight the back of your pelvis more final stage of the pose if you want the intense stretch just hold the back of your thighs and extend your legs straighter like legs up the wall position if you can get your legs straight you're flexible if you can't you're like me moderately inflexible Okay, if you like rocking, you can rock yourself back up to seated position or just roll to your side, up to you. This is where we're gonna go for the bolster. And uh, the bolster is a fun one. It will be positioning it lengthwise on your mat and then remembering the seated side twist where you were in all fours and then pivoting your knees. So same idea, turn your knees to the left so your right hip snuggles right up against the bolster. And then from there, turn your chest, so it's actually a twist, to go onto the bolster. And then you can even rest. So knees to the left, and rest looking to the left with your right ear to the bolster. Like it's got some secrets to tell you. Mine's telling me it's soft. I can always count on it to support me. Okay, if you want to increase the twist, it's just a gentle lift up using both hands and then twist your chest further to the right to bring your left ear down, looking the other direction. So that might be too much, or you might enjoy it so much more. If you don't have a bolster, maybe have um, one of those 15 kilogram bags of rice that we've all gotten, just in case 2021 is similar. Okay, if you look to the right, just look to the left. And then use both hands, push your way up, tuck your toes, bring your knees back to center. Take a deep breath in. And as you exhale, turn your knees to the right. So it's left hip, snug up against the bolster. Turn over the bolster and then hinge down. Again, just look to the right to start with. There's definitely been a shortage of hugs this year, so this might be your opportunity to get some of the, the hugs you've been missing out. Maybe it's a million dollar yoga idea is to create bolsters with uh, limbs. Okay, again, you can stay here or make it more intense. I like how this can be more intense by just lifting up and just twisting a little further to the left so you can look to the left, bring your right ear down. And that's pretty intense for me. Sometimes I'm happy just to stay looking in the same direction. And the idea there also is like, how far is too far when you're twisting? If I could twist and look to the ceiling, is that too far? Okay, if you look to the left, just look to the right again. 
to the right, to the right. And then push yourself back and then to all fours. And then just prepping yourself up for a final relaxation position. We haven't really used the blanket this whole time except for now. And the intention here, again, you could just be in a regular Shavasana. I now will often bring a towel in if I take a friend's class just to put behind my head. It might even just be about like a quarter of this thickness, but just to prop the head up a little bit and give it some padding. So the same idea here, except I'll be lying lengthwise on the bolster and um, my bolster is in a position and my body length for my torso will be that my hips will actually be on the mat. My legs will just go off because I've angled it a little different and then putting the blanket up for the head. So just seeing what that looks like. I snuggle up with the bolster. So nice. And then I lower down so the head stays up high. And then in this position, lots of different options for the legs. It could go the Baddha Konasana position, bottoms of the feet together, knees wide. Could be just knees bent, kind of like the bridge setup or legs straight. And then the same with the arms, you could go hand to belly, hand to chest, or just arms alongside you. If there's any other relaxing position, legs up the wall, or just a general seated position, stay as you are in that. And just for the last couple minutes, practicing a pranayama, so a breath exercise called Viloma, which actually stands for against the grain. And in some ways to be without stress for 2020 is actually going against the grain because this has been such a heightened year. So doing our best to resist the trappings of this uh, chaotic ear by finding relaxation through the breath. And this one is difficult because you will want to exhale out. Um, what it is is three inhales. And with the first three, there'll be just a short period of exhaling. So it'll be about five seconds for an inhale and then just a brief exhale out and then an inhale for another five and then a brief exhale out and then an inhale for another five and then finally exhaling out for about 15 seconds or so. So I'll guide you through it. Just inhale all the way to begin with and then exhale out. And then just the first inhale section for a count of two, three, four, five, and then exhale just a little bit. And then inhale again, two, three, four, five, and exhale just a little bit. And last time, inhale, two, three, four, five. And then exhale it all the way out, taking your time, trying to match the same total time as it was to inhale till you're completely empty. And round two, so inhale, two, three, four, five, pause with a little exhale. And again, inhale, two, three, four, five, second break, little exhale. And then last time, two, three, four, five, and then exhale all the way out. So 
called Viloma Against the Grain just because it's so challenging to stop your inhale and then continue inhaling. So again, inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale a little bit. Inhale, two, three, four, five. Exhale just a little bit. And inhale, two, three, four, five. And then exhale all the way out. And seeking independence this last cycle just with your own count. Once you're finished that long exhale, come back to a natural breath. This is a, a tool, this pranayama breath that you could uh, exercise for a five, 10, 15 minute period to find deep relaxation. It can often lead to falling asleep. That's how relaxing it is. Um, but the challenge of course is that you have to pay attention because it's so integral. Begin to move your head side to side, wiggle your fingers and your toes, and then bend your knees and reach your arms up. And then roll over to one side. It's the fetal position. You can rest your head on your arm. The nice thing of a practice like this is that it's perfect uh, set up for going straight to bed would be pretty early for those of you on the west coast. Uh, just slowly make your way up to a seated position. And then join your hands together, place your thumbs to your forehead. For clear thoughts your thumbs to your mouth for honest words and then your thumbs in front of your heart for an open heart. Namaste.